to the vault, the New Minds Vault, where you will find treasures of wisdom from the New Minds Vault. So, hey, today's activity continues from episode 28, two years, two days ago on Wednesday. Sorry, that had the volume up. We're playing the intro, there's a little bit of lag. So I'm in the future. I'm actually a few seconds in the future right now. Let me tell you, it's cool. The future's pretty cool. Okay, listen. Remember this. If you don't, you can go back and watch episode 28, but it's okay, we're gonna review really quick. This is the magical Fibonacci manifesting in a pine cone. If you remember, let's jump back in time to Wednesday, where we talked about this crazy sequence of numbers, okay? And we kind of broke it down together. Remember I had the technical trouble and had to do the session on my phone and the numbers were backwards. This time they're not backwards, that's a plus, okay? So there was this mysterious list of numbers. At first glance, seems a bit random, not too exciting, Mr. Ben. But then I told you about Leonardo Fibonacci, this Italian mathematician who was obsessed with numbers and he came across this pattern and thought it was super cool because it is a pattern. It's not a random list of numbers. So just to refresh your memory, to get each number, we go to the two previous numbers and add them up. It's like a little pre-K addition. So, I mean, it's pre-K like here, but when you get really, really, really big numbers because it keep, the sequence keeps going. Okay, so we have you know, zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, three plus five is eight, and so on. We just took this one up to 34, but you can go on and on. So listen, like I was saying on Wednesday, if, or in episode 28, if that's all there is to it, it's not such a big deal because any of us could make up a cool number pattern and just list it out. It's just about patterns. But what Fibonacci saw in this was something that went beyond just a random list of numbers. What he did was he looked around nature and he noticed that these numbers seem to be nature's dun, da, 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 favorite numbers, right? So for some reason, when nature is growing flowers, growing animals, growing humans, it seems to like the Fibonacci numbers. It seems to like these numbers. So you got two eyeballs, We've got five fingers, five toes, etc., and you know different parts of the body at the cellular level we could look at. But simple things too, like the number of flower, petals on a flower, different kinds of flowers. And we talked specifically about two cool things, uh, pine cones and pineapples. Now this was the pine cone that we painted on episode 28. And if you remember, I, I just grabbed some simple acrylic paints and I found a pine cone on the street and I just painted the spirals, alternating colors, just to make them easier to count. And we counted, and indeed there were eight. And by the way, a little side benefit of this is if you paint them right and you swirl them as you approach someone's face gently, you can hypnotize them. I'm just kidding, but it's fun to pretend. You can pretend to hypnotize your little brother or sister. And you can trick your parents and say you're hypnotizing your little brother or sister and make them clean their room, <laughs> okay? All right, now, if you have pine cones of different sizes, bigger ones, like huge pine cones, which exist, have you seen those before? Go, go to like giant forests, old forests, and the pine cones are even bigger. Or sometimes pine cones are smaller, they're babies. And if you count, what you'll find is, this, this one had eight, a larger pine cone might have 13. A smaller pine cone might have three or five, right? So, but Fibonacci numbers, nature seems to like them. Then, Mr. Ben had a pineapple in his kitchen. We went and looked at the pineapple, and indeed that. If you counted the, the spirals going around the body of the pineapple, same thing. I have an idea. I want to show you some pictures. I'm going to show you some pictures. So, I'm going to flip to a, a simple little presentation I made that has a couple of reminders then today's activity which is just super cool it's one of my favorites actually i used to think i didn't like math and then i came across the fibonacci sequence and i'm like but but teachers math is awesome and kind of fun and mysterious and cool why didn't you teach me that in second third fourth fifth or sixth grade right sometimes i wonder but it was always right there it was always right there for me to discover and if you're watching this you don't have to wait 
until you're an adult, you can find the magic of math right now. Okay, so look. First, I want to show you this really cool book. Parents, if you're tuning in right now, teachers, if you're tuning in right now, there's this great uh, picture book biography of Fibonacci called Blockhead. Sounds kind of harsh, right? That's because when Fibonacci was a kid, people called him Blockhead. They didn't think he was very smart, but he was actually really passionate, really obsessed, and he turned that into this fascination with numbers. And he ended up with a number sequence named after him. That's pretty darn cool, right? Okay, here's just a review of the sequence. Might be a little easier to read than Mr. Ben's handwriting on a clipboard, but here you go. And this one keeps going, right? I stopped at 34, but it continues. 55, 89, 144, 233, etc. right? And I challenge you to see how high you can get that before falling asleep, okay? Now, just a quick review. Here are... Pine cones, right? That one has eight, just like the real life one, that I, the hypnotizing amulet that we made over here, right? Okay. Um, there's a pineapple. This is just a diagram. I actually, I we cut up and ate the pineapple yesterday. It's a cruel world, folks. Right? One day you're part of a cool steam, you know, session online. The next day you're dinner. We actually grilled the pineapple. It was really good, and then made a cake. Okay. So, but. Look at the pineapple in the diagram here. There's lots of different ways you can count the spirals around a pineapple. You can go kind of like a, almost horizontal, almost vertical. It doesn't matter. You get a Fibonacci number either way. And then remember, we I, don't, I didn't have a sunflower with me, and I still don't. But another example often cited is a sunflower. And you can see even in this picture, the spirals. If you ever get a chance to come across a real sunflower, go up really close and examine it as long as it's not 10 feet tall because they get pretty tall but if you have the height or the ability to look straight at it look very closely and you'll see there's spirals that seem to go left that seem to go right and it would t be hard to count them because there are so many but if you do count them indeed you may find actually you will find uh it's a fibonacci number amazing stuff it's really cool but now what I want to do is show you the next level. I almost gave it away too soon. So there's another way that these numbers show up in nature. And it's other than just like the, the number of items on a thing, like spirals or petals or things like that. So what I want to do is here's where you need your supplies for today. Super simple. A ruler, some colored pencils, and a piece of paper. I want to show you if you have graph paper, that's actually best if we have some graph paper. Personally, I don't. I wish I did. Here in quarantine, I don't have graph paper at home. If we were in the office, I'd have plenty of graph paper at New Mind's headquarters, but that's fine. We can make it work just like this. What I'm gonna do is grab my ruler, and I'm gonna use centimeters today, FYI, and I have, um, I'm gonna use a pen. I'm gonna use a pen. You can use a pencil, doesn't really matter. Just an initial thing, we're gonna be creating some squares and rectangles, and then we're gonna transform that into something magic. It is, it's magic. And I don't mean like the fake hypnotizer magic, it's like real magic, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pop my, pop my screen down like this so everyone can see what I'm doing right here. A nice look at my surface. And so here's what I'm gonna do. You see that probably my ruler, just like yours, has a centimeter side and an inches side. Let's use the centimeter side today. You know, it's the, the metric system is indeed the, the system of science and math. Well, I guess math can be anything. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Do you remember the first Fibonacci number other than zero is one. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a square that's one by one. Okay, what do I mean by that? It means, a, well, the definition of a square is that all sides are the same length, right? So I'm just going to create a square that's one by one by one. You know, that just means that every side of the square is one inch, okay? We're just relaxing. We're just relaxing. Episode 30 here. This is the calm part. If if I were doing this and not having to talk to you, i put on some nice relaxing music in the background, and I could really do this for a long time. Really, it's relaxing. So what I want to do is do the next Fibonacci number. So we, we drew a one, right? What's the next Fibonacci number? Do you remember from the sequence? 
yeah, it's another one. It's another one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a square next to that one. It's, it's important to kind of make it side by side. That's a one by one by one. And listen, this is not about perfection, although get, be as accurate as you can without obsessing about perfection. That's where graph paper comes in handy because you can use the actual squares on the graph paper to do this and it's a little bit easier. And now what I wanna do is the next Fibonacci number, we've got one plus one is two, right? We got that. So now I'm gonna do a square that's two by two pressed up against the two squares that I just made, right? So this one's gonna be two centimeters that way. Two centimeters that way. And then finish it off. I'm gonna to try to speed up a little bit here. And two centimeters that way. So if we're looking at Fibonacci, we got one, one, two. What's next? Three. So right next to that one, we're gonna do a three by three square. Sounds really simple, right? Just wait till you see how it all comes together. Okay. Three centimeters. Three centimeters. And finish this one off three centimeters. We're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, three centimeters. All right, so we got one, one, two, three. Remember the next Fibonacci number? It was two plus three equals Five. So can you see how we're kind of like using the previous squares as one edge? So now we want to use this edge as the edge of the next square. We have three, four, five. So we're making a square with five centimeters. Five centimeters, getting pretty big here, right? Five centimeters. I'm telling you, this is relaxing five centimeters okay and uh, I have just a regular you know piece of printer paper here if you get a giant piece of paper like construction paper or even some butcher paper and you get a giant piece you can go on for a long time we're gonna we're you're gonna find that this next one is the biggest one we can do because we ran out of paper but that's okay we can still make our cool you know magic that I promised one one two three five three plus five is eight and then we're going to use the edge of the squares here so i'm going to line up my ruler okay we've got a square that's eight by eight by eight by eight that's <laughs> four sides on a square right okay let's close this one up and then we'll stop there Okay, first of all, what we have already, what we have already created is already kind of special. This is called a golden rectangle. The reason it's a golden rectangle is because the length and the width are both Fibonacci numbers. And for some reason, when the length and the width are both Fibonacci numbers, something special happens. This is a little bit advanced, but there's another special number called phi, P-H-I, not don't confuse that with pi. Okay, we don't eat this one. Um, phi, and it has to do with when you have a Fibonacci number and divide it by a smaller Fibonacci number, the one right below it, you always get the same ratio, which is 1.6 roughly, 1.61. And there's something about that that nature really loves and also that humans seem to love. That will be a next chapter later, hopefully in a future vault. Um, but architecture throughout human history has used that if you look at the front of buildings, Greek architecture, you'll see that it has this ratio right here, right? So what we have is our, our sequence of one, one, two, three, five, eight. Now, the next one, 13 would go here, but we ran out of space, right? But that's okay. We have exactly what we need. I'm gonna see if I can move the sheet a little bit closer for this next part, because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, okay? Now next, what we do is we design what's called the golden spiral. I'm gonna use a pin. I've done this many times before, so I kinda know what I'm doing. But 
uh, I recommend using a pencil because you it will take a few tries. It will take a few tries and you might mess up. Well, you will mess up. I'll just go ahead and say it. You will mess up. So don't be afraid to erase and start over. So here's what we do. We go to the the first one, okay? And actually, I, I should have made this one first. I made this one, then this one. So th think of this as the first one. And what I wanna do is start in that corner, start in one of the corners, and I wanna loop a curved loop, not a straight line from quarter to corner. I want to loop from this from this one, oops, over into this one, the next one, and then I'm going to go in the Fibonacci order. And I'm going to loop from that corner into the next square. See how I'm gradually kind of looping around so that it looks so smooth. Then I get into the next square, I continue it, and you see what's happening here. You see what's happening here is a spiral is forming. Like I said, it takes some practice. It's one thing, you can use a compass, not a compass that tells you directions, but the compass that helps you draw circles. You can use a compass to kind of help you draw this spiral. You put it, you put the tip of the compass here, and then you are on the corner, corner of the square and then kind of let the pencil wrap around but in the end I've done it so many times that it ends up being easier to freehand it so do you see what we've created here this is the golden rectangle and inside the golden rectangle we have created the golden spiral okay see how it went like that this is derived using the Fibonacci number so we started with just numbers we created shapes and we used those shapes to create this pattern the Fibonacci spiral. So you might say, like you did last time, Mr. Ben, big whoop. What's the big idea with the Fibonacci spiral? Okay, good question. Good question. It's on me now, because I promised, I promised some cool magic here. So let's see what we got. Let's go back and look at my screen a little bit. I want to show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so we've already seen how the Fibonacci numbers appear in different ways, right? The number of spirals on the pine cone or on the pineapple or the sunflower right here's what we just did you can see how with the graph paper it's even easier see how in the diagram so they did the same thing we did one one two they, they did it in a slightly different order like they put their two on top of their ones instead of below but it's all the same right as long as you go in the right order and they made their spiral just like us now here's the thing you know how Fibonacci found the Fibonacci numbers out in nature? Well, he found the spiral out in nature too. Look at this, look at this satellite view of a hurricane. Does that look familiar? Isn't that incredible? Isn't that really just kind of magic? Do you admit it? That's pretty cool. So the Fibonacci rectangle sort of contains the hurricane and the spiral describes its movement. That is pretty wild stuff. Look at the, the ram's horn. On this one, I don't have the overlay of the Fibonacci rectangle or the golden rectangle, but the ram's horn grows. The more it grows, it follows the pattern of the Fibonacci spiral. It's absolutely amazing. What else? Seashells. Not, not all seashells, by the way, but many, many seashells form with this same pattern. It, seems, it really seems to love Nature really seems to love this Fibonacci spiral pattern. It's just absolutely incredible. Don't stop there. Um, humans, we're part of nature. And guess what? Our bodies seem to like the Fibonacci sequence as well. So look at the this x-ray of a human hand and look at the length of the bones. Okay, wow, look. Fibonacci numbers. Look what happens when, and you can try this yourself right now. Make a little fist and look carefully as sort of the rectangle that's formed by your hand guess what it reflects the Fibonacci spiral the golden spiral and if you want I recommend take the ruler measure the length and width of that fist that you made and see if it, it really is golden see if it's uh, the Fibonacci um, ratio and then down below there if you open up your hand and kind of look at the distance between thumb and pinky when your hand is fully spread wow and this will vary from person to person like everyone may not have a perfect Fibonacci 
you know spiral going on with this in their hand but pretty amazing that even if we're just close that consistency that beautiful consistency of nature so I want to show you a, a, a way to make your own spiral that you make even more beautiful and kind of a cool piece to show I'm gonna go back to just myself and go back to the little thing that we did this is where the colored pencils come in so what looks really cool is if you take your colored pencils and square make each square a different color I pre I pre created one that I'm going to show you so you won't you don't have to watch me color the whole thing I'll just do the first couple but there's something really cool visually that happens when you do this I think it's art in itself and if you'd really took your time and made a really nice thoughtful one of these I mean it's worthy of hanging up in your in your room I'll just do maybe one more like I said, it's relaxing, right? Imagine some super chill music playing. You've got your graph paper. You're just making giant Fibonacci spirals. Man, now that's cool. Okay, let's see how it already looks cool. Let, now I'm gonna show you the one that I did. I did before our session here. I made one. And uh, isn't that awesome? Isn't that fun? It's a Fibonacci rectangle, including the Fibonacci spiral. And it's all right there it's all accessible to us that's that's one thing that's so cool about this I don't need special equipment or technology all I need is the knowledge of the Fibonacci sequence and I can make all these amazing connections right this I just found on a walk with my dogs in my front yard this I just drew on a piece of paper and it's all the magic of Fibonacci it's super cool all right guys I hope that was a cool little inspiring way to wrap up Earth Day week we did earth related things all week and for me Fibonacci is just a great reflection of what nature already provides us in terms of math and magic it's all built in it's all built in it's just ours there it's there for us to tap into and enjoy so friends have a fantastic rest of your day whatever time you're watching this keep it real and inspired keep it tuned to newminds.tv Pursue your passions until they become your talents. Take care, all.